Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and all the blessings it has to offer us individually and collectively as a city. Philadelphia <laughs> Union. Father, bless the city of Norfolk and every citizen who resides within its boundaries and every city employee who works to make our city great. Bless our mayor and each member of our council as well as our city manager as we attempt to govern with fairness and guide the city through its challenging times. Allow us to be tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic to the striving and tolerant of the weak and of the strong. Father, bless those who are less fortunate and allow them to feel the warmth of your compassion and love. These and all other blessings we ask in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, the clerk will please call the roll. Surrey wanted to pray too. Green. Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Here. Um, Mr. Smeagle? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to excuse Mr. Riddick. <coughs> Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley, Ms. Williams, Mr. Wynn, Mr. Frame. Aye. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Ms. Green. Aye. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. The clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. The resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Green. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. For the benefit of those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the process which we will follow tonight is the first thing we're going to do is uh, we will take up the, the several public hearings that are on the council uh, docket. There are four of them. Then we have one quick consent agenda item at C1, and then we'll move to the regular <coughs> agenda. And we have a number of regular agenda items. We'll vote on all of these matters in just the way that they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, and that's something that's not in our formal docket, you'll be given that opportunity. But in order to have your name called, you must have first signed a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available in the lobby out behind the, the uh, council chambers before the meeting began. But before we get to the formal part of our agenda, we do have one ceremonial uh, ma <clears throat> matter uh, concerning the American Red Cross Month. And is Aaron Zabel here? Aaron, hi. You want to come on up? Thank you for coming down tonight. I'm going to read the proclamation, and sure, then we'd be glad to hear from you. The proclamation reads, Whereas President Franklin Roosevelt first proclaimed American Red Cross Month in March 1943, and every president since has called on Americans to support the organization's humanitarian mission. Whereas the American Red Cross has been helping people for prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies for more than 130 years. <clears throat> and whereas the American Red Cross is celebrating and recognizing citizens in our community who help their fellow citizens by giving blood, volunteering, or making a financial contribution. Whereas on average, the American Red Cross must collect 15,000 pints of blood every day to meet the needs of patients at approximately 2,700 hospitals and transfusion centers across the country. Whereas the American Red Cross provides disaster relief, health and safety training, and a stable blood supply for citizens in Norfolk, Hampton Roads, Southeast of Virginia, and across the world. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby proclaim the month of March 2014 as American Red Cross Month in the City of Norfolk and encourage all citizens to support the programs and services of the local American Red Cross organization by donating blood, learning a life-saving skill, volunteering, or making a financial donation to aid the efforts of this humanitarian organization given under my hand this 18th day of March 2014. And Aaron, let me hand this to you. And thank you for coming down, and thanks for everything you're doing as well. I appreciate it Okay, would you like to make, let's Just make a few comments? I just wanted to say thank you all so much for recognizing this important month. And certainly if you've ever given or gotten blood, if you've ever been in the military or had someone close to you in the military, 
if you've ever taken a water safety class, learned CPR, uh, you've been touched by the American Red Cross. And I think we hear so often about um, the international work of the Red Cross and <coughs> large-scale disaster relief we do, which is extraordinarily important. But the majority of the work we're doing is right here in your own backyard, here in the city of Norfolk, helping folks who've unfortunately dealt with a house fire, um, folks in the military who need emergency communication services, and of course, life-saving blood and blood products for all of our local hospitals. So again, please um, keep the important local work of the American Red Cross in mind, and I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming down here. Appreciate it. Thanks for those comments. Okay, we'll now move to our uh, formal agenda. Public hearing one, please. <clears throat> Public hearing one scheduled for this day to hear comments authorizing the conveyance to Joel J. Lopez and Kelly Lee Lopez of a certain parcel of property described as the south side of Portal Road acquired by the city pursuant to section 58.1-3970.1 of the Code of Virginia 1950 as amended and improving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. There are no members of the public who are here to speak to the council on this matter. Okay, you can call them. Of an ordinance repealing ordinance number 45169 adopted July 9, 2013 and authorizing the conveyance to Joel J. Lopez and Kelly Lee Lopez of a certain parcel of property acquired by the city pursuant to the Code of Virginia and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two, uh, scheduled for this day to hear comments on approving a lease agreement with Crown Castle GT Company, LLC, for an existing communication tower located at 422 Government Avenue. Call the roll. I have an ordinance approving a lease agreement with Crown Castle GT Company, LLC, for an existing communications tower located at 422 Government Avenue. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Oh, before I vote, can I ask something? Sure. <clears throat> there was some discussion uh, that came about. Uh, is this is this tower <clears throat> going to be like a flagpole type <clears throat> tower, where they, or is this going to be a tower tower? Do we know? Um, <laughs> I don't know that there is one flagpole tower in Willoughby. No, There's one on Granby. There's one on Granby. Uh, okay. Is this a regular tower? Uh, I, I don't know. know which I think it's is. already in existence, I believe. It's, ar it it's already existing. there. Okay. This, is a, this is a renewal of a lease. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. The, and the reason I ask is... is and, it's and West Government <laughs> Avenue. It's, it's down there. It's past the... Uh, it's, a, it's, <clears throat> it's past the Knights of Columbus. It's by Ocean View Elementary. Right. All right. Well, the reason I ask is there was an issue that was raised by the Talbot uh, Park Civic League, and part of what's happening is, is that when they come in with these flagpoles, on these cell towers. What they're doing is the flags are not an appropriate size for the pole. Right. And we've been caught off guard on these, on, on these several. So let's just make it a point from now on that as policy, <clears throat> that if they come in, that we have a specific square footage that's required <clears throat> of the flag on the flagpole on these so it doesn't get away from us. Uh, is the flagpole too, is the flag too big or too, too small? small? Too small, too small, too small. Okay. You can never have a too big American flag. <laughs> Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three, please. Public hearing three scheduled for this day <clears throat> to hear comments on approving a lease agreement with Crown Castle GT Company LLC for an existing communications tower at 1384 <coughs> Hermsville Road. And I have an ordinance approving the lease agreement with Crown Castle for an existing communications tower um, located on a parcel of property line 90 feet south of the closest point of the outfield fence of the girls' varsity softball <coughs> field at Taylor High School. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Again, do we know, is this is an existing tower? As yes. Existing yes. Tower. All right. Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. Public hearing four is scheduled for this day to hear comments on approving a land disposition and development contract with <coughs> Ocean View Properties, Inc. for two parcels of land consisting of a total of 5.737 acres, more or less, and located at 719 East Ocean View Avenue. Just a second. Ann, is it Bolin? Yes. Would you like to come up? If you'll tell us your name and your present home address, please, and then try to limit your remarks to three minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, it's Ann Bolin. I'm at uh, 9542 18th Bay Street in Norfolk. And I just have a few questions before uh, the council approves this contract of sale. Uh, one is that I understand that part of this contract of sale will be uh, selling the existing senior center. 
uh, as well as the empty lot, which was the Ramada Inn. And I'd like to know, if sold, what is the plan given, um, reported to be that, you know, I've been told that the city has no extra money. So what are we going to do about replacing the senior center if you're selling it? Um, so that would be, uh, is it going to be part of the purchase price? Is that some of what's going to be used to replace the senior center or what? Um, I would like to know is um, the contract, we're tying it up in a contract of sale. Is there going to be some type of a due diligence period that, is this going to be a long drawn out contract or uh, is, can there be backup offers or, you know, how long is it going to be tied up for this? you know, purpose. I, I understand that they want to build 250 to 280 market rate apartments, 20,000 square feet of retail. Has anybody um, identified that they have retail already identified for this project or are they going to sure. just build it? So I do have some questions, sir, about the project. Um, Mrs. Boland, um, we typically receive comments about what we're about to vote on and don't, resp don't answer questions mm -hmm. um, at this point. But if anybody has got a reply, I mean, that's typically what we were here to hear, comments from the public before we vote on a Well, on sir, a public if, I, if I don't understand the details of the transaction and what's planned, I don't know if I have questions or not. Okay. Just well, I, and I'll, I can answer the question. There is $3 million that is the purchase price, and it's a general understanding that that stays... Um, in Ocean View for other, we, we have a kind of a agreement on council that this is generally what happens considering that it was Ocean View conservation funds that purchased the Ramada Inn mm -hmm. and that money will be reinvested into uh, other, possibly replacing the senior center. The city has been actively looking at sites uh, to replace the senior center. Um, you're aware that a con uh, offer was made at one place and we're going to continue looking for those locations. As far as the individual contract agreement, um, you know, that's, there, there is a provision. They have a certain amount of time. They have to go through the planning process. So there's a lot of opportunity for public feedback about the design of this, including traffic studies and all of that will continue to go forward. Right. That The uh, due diligence period is 180 days to okay. check out the site for environmental, title issues, anything like that. Uh, then the outside closing date is one year from the date of the agreement uh, so that it could be executed this week. And then after it is executed, there is a design period and then a commencement start date, a, com a commencement completion date. Okay. So that's all part of the contract. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the retail component, I, I think in most development projects, they don't identify the retail um, before the it's built. However, the developers indicated what he would like to see there, which includes a restaurant, uh, a, a clean, cleaners, and a, a couple boutique type shops. So that's his vision for that, in which he's actually tonight discussing with the community, um, the Civic League, Pinewell Civic League. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Alton Robinson. Uh, good evening, Mayor Frame. My name is Alter Ross. My address is 735 West 35th Street. I'm here to speak on this uh, particular project because some things were brought to my attention as I read through the whole contract. And um, I see here that um, the applicant Ocean View Properties Incorporated, I was uh, unable to get information on them. Also, it uses 719 East Ocean View Avenue as the address. But here's the interesting thing. There are two parcels of land here, the 719 East Ocean View Avenue, and then you have the 600 East Ocean View Avenue. And they both have two separate accounts in this city's assessor's office. So when I looked at the uh, assessment value of each property, the uh, land use value because of 719 East Ocean View Avenue has no uh, building on it. So that land is valued at $2 million $40,800, just that one parcel. But the 600 East Ocean View Avenue parcel is assessed at $3,741,100. So when, when you add those two together, you come up with a figure of $5,781,100. Now, 
Then you add in the price of the Ramada Inn, which was $2.5 million. So now, if you're selling the land for $2.5 million and the, uh, the price of the Ramada Inn was $2.5 million, that's $500 plus. And the way this is, is written, it really doesn't give the uh, citizens a good overview because if you subtract three million dollars from the uh, five million seven hundred and eighty-one dollars, you have a two million seven hundred eighty-one dollars that the city is giving away. It's as if the person getting a sale from the city, buy one get one free. I spent three million dollars, and I'm gonna get three million dollars free from the city, but the city didn't design it in the agenda item where the people could understand it. It's almost as if it's trickery, but I don't want to use that term, maybe deceptive, but it's, it doesn't appear to be right that we would spend $3 million, we would uh, sell a property for $3 million where the city invested $2.5 million and then the other part of the uh, property given away is worth $3.7 million. So that's $5 million. So this person is almost doubling their money. So they even getting going beyond the sale. They, they getting their $3 million plus. So I don't know how anyone on this council can say, yeah, we want to approve this project as a good steward of the city's money when we have schools that are dilapidated and we have seniors that are crying because they can't get a tax relief. And honestly, I know that you all know the figures that I just gave are correct. So go down and approve it, because that's what you're going to do. OK, uh, that's the last of the speakers. Any comments? I, I do. Um, <clears throat> you know, we looked at this uh, a while back, and I'm not sure when, I can't recall when the Ramada was um, acquired. 2009. When was, nine, OK. Um, and I have a problem with the overassessment. I made that statement before of how we have some of these city properties assessed that are useless. Right now, we aren't getting anything from this particular site in terms of tax revenue um, because it's a city site. So we're not getting anything at all from it. And um, I'd like to see us go through our owned properties, the properties that we own as a city, and actually send somebody out there to look at it, look at the value of it, and give an accurate assessment on these city properties. Because a lot of them, I mean, it's no different than the um, transaction that we had on 21st Street for um, the, the market that's coming, where the building was assessed for one thing, but it is absolutely, it was an absolutely useless building to anyone. There was no plumbing, there was no electricity, it was just a shell of a building, but it was assessed at an amount of money that, in my opinion, was um, invalid. So I would like to see us so that we don't appear that we're, you know, giving away <clears throat> Two million dollars to city assessment to to developers. Now, sometimes it's not always possible to recoup the money that you spend because you may spend the money at a time when the price of money is higher, um, the price of goods are higher than they are when you sell them. But I would at least like to see us try to get to an even playing field on some of these assessments. Um, so that if we do have to make concessions for development, um, which is something that we do have to do, we are not appearing to make this ridiculously huge concession when the property is not necessarily worth what we have it listed as to begin with. So thank you. Let me add one thing. And Councilman Schmeagle and I, even before he came on council, have dealt with a number of reputable have met with a number of reputable developers who have come in with all different iterations of offers, and this is cleanest, it's the best, the product is the best. It's not something that we just arrived at easily. I know Councilman Schmeagel has talked to the community, it's what they want, and it's uh, they're not asking for concessions, they're not asking for breaks. Uh, it, was not, it was not something that we've not looked at for a long time, and, and think it's a very good 
product to come. And as you say, we need to look at our assessments all over the city. We've got <coughs> buildings that are have negative values that we need to that we're selling, trying to sell, and 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 it looks like it's, it's some kind of a giveaway, but it's not. It's mm -hmm. a, they they d take a, diminish the value of the property. But this doesn't have that doesn't pertain there, but it's it's not something we arrived at lightly, and we've looked at it a long time. I just want to. One more comment is just that, too, um, on city assessments, as, as many people know, is the city assessments are designed by every city, not just the city of Norfolk, as a methodology to collect tax revenue. And I don't think there's many of us in this room who could sell our homes <coughs> for what the city assessment value is. I know I couldn't sell mine. So I'd, in essence, be giving a buyer uh, money if I, I'd give them value or paper equity as it would be if I tried to sell my individual home for what the city has it assessed at. Um, yep. I just was, before I got on council, this property was purchased. It was a strategic purchase for Ocean View. I don't know if I would have paid as much as we paid for it, but I wasn't on council at that time. But the goal has always been from the community and myself that we've made that the number one economic development uh, priority in Ocean View, knowing that the money that would be generated from that land sale would go be reinvested back in the community. Uh, the process actually started about two and a half years ago, uh, and I want to thank Chuck Rigney, who was the acting director at the time of economic development, who recognized the potential of that site. Um, and instead of uh, always catering um, and advertising downtown locations, he actually started putting developers down to Ocean View to look at the site, um, and it started generating a buzz, which ended up creating an RFP. Uh, process. In fact, this site was uh, on the city's city sites for a very long time uh, for people to see that it was for sale and what was uh, the potential with the, sen the senior center. When it went out for RFP, there were three offers on the site with this one winning out. Uh, the other ones came in very low, uh, which the community, were they were aware of what was happening, um, and this one was the only one that actually offered retail, uh, a retail component of it. From the very first day, I have spoken to the Civic League that it immediately impacts. They've been aware of what's happening here. I've spoken to every Civic League in Ocean View. They have been aware of this project and that it was coming. Uh, in fact, like I said tonight, the developer, who is a local developer, uh, is meeting with the Civic League. So as they move through the planning stage, they are addressing their concerns with some traffic and design to make sure that they are submitting the best uh, designed to uh, to go through the planning process. And, you know, one other thing, too, that is, as was already mentioned by Councilman Wynn, this developer uh, asked nothing from the city. In fact, they threw in that they're going to renovate the bathrooms at Community Beach as part of this project. They did not have to do that. They have an immediate impact from that because it is across from their property, but to make the community uh, 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 better, they are redoing the bathrooms for us, which is a, a cost. That's not something that uh, we're paying for. Um, this has helped us uh, with some better vision and planning for that area because of the golf course and because of the community beach, including the purchase of the Traveler's Insight uh, to uh, prepare for some more open space in that area. And we think that this is going to be a great project, a $40 million project that's going to generate almost 500000 a year in tax revenue for the city. Um, and be able to pr add people in an area where we don't have a huge population and we need that in order to draw some more interest. Um, that is one of the issues when you're by water, when you draw a population bubble, half of it's out in the water. And so it's very hard to get retail and other things to come in in those areas because they don't have the population to support it. So we think it's going to be a great project for that and we're going to continue following uh, them as they go through the design, and I think the developers are actively listening to the community and want to work with them in order to make sure that this is a successful project for everyone. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah. And Mr. Robinson, first of all, thank you for questioning, because that's always important. It, it adds to uh, what government can do to be able to answer. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this project. I have not been a big fan of this project since the RFP went out. I think that we could do better. Um, uh, but uh, And I have talked to the one Civic League uh, that uh, I represent in that area that's further down at Willoughby, and they were not in favor of the density of this project. But, however, we're not there yet. Um, so uh, that being said, uh, I, 
I, I know how, once it comes to vote, how I, I believe I will vote uh, uh, on this, but uh, I think we could have done better. Um, I know it went to RFP. Sometimes RFPs uh, just, um, Mr. Manager, RFPs, I don't know <laughs> what's going on and how they've come about, uh, but I think the, over the last year, some of them just haven't been the greatest in the world. So, and I know that some personnel have changed, uh, not necessarily at uh, development, but at other places within City Hall, and, and uh, we have probably missed the boat on how that some of that could work. Uh, but I'll wait and see what uh, ultimately comes about with the, this project uh, 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 in meeting with the neighbors and, and how we ultimately will feel about it and the density and its location. Um, I am somewhat concerned how they're going to handle the stacking of apartments that are already there in that vicinity. So uh, again, I'm not, I'm not a uh, huge fan of this, but I'll have to wait and see what comes through planning. Okay. Call the roll, please. Northern Superland's position and development contract with Ocean View Properties, Inc. for two parcels of land consisting of a total of 5.737 acres, more or less, and located at 719 East Ocean View Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Dr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, the consent agenda, C1, please. For the consent agenda, Ms. Green? Mm -hmm. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1. <coughs> R1 is an ordinance granting a special exception to Asia Food of Norfolk, Inc., authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment known as Golden China on property located at 9645 First View Street. By 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2? An ordinance granting a special exception to Zayaka, Inc., authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment known as Island Crave Caribbean Smokehouse on property located at 222 West 21st Street, Unit J. Planning Commission recommends approval by 7-0 vote. Dorothy Lavelle is here to answer questions if we have any. Okay, you can call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Not too crazy about how they're spelling crave here, but um, <laughs> I'll vote aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3? An ordinance granting a special exception to Josh D. Loney to permit mixed uses on property located at 6137 to 6145 Sewells Point Road. <laughs> Planning Commission recommends this on a 7-0 vote. And uh, Josh Looney, Austin Looney, and Ann Wilson are here to speak if we have any questions. Okay, thanks for coming down. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4? I have two ordinances on this, Mr. Okay. President. Uh, the first is an ordinance granting a special exception to Push Comedy Theater, authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment known as Push Theater on property located at 763 Grammy Street. And on both, uh, the Planning Commission recommends them on a 7-0 vote. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. S Mr. Uh, I mean, sorry, Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit off-lot parking on property located at 111 West Virginia Beach Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5? An ordinance granting a special exception to Solitude Trail LLC authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment known as Small's Restaurant and Catering Company on property located at 2700 Hampton Boulevard. Planning Commission recommends approval by 7-0 vote. And hey, Mr. Small, John is here to answer questions if you have any. So. Uh, I do. Uh, okay. John? John? Sir? You could, real quick. Just so, and the only reason I have a question is, is just so it's a better explanation to understand. Um, it, this gives you an opportunity to say what the diff, what you're, come on up to the John, you can come up. Let people know what you're going to be doing and why you're asking for a special exception. And it's not just for us, it's really for the citizens to understand. Right. We're, we're uh, doing a brunch now on Saturday and Sunday, and, and we start at 10 o'clock in the morning. So... The reason for that is so we can do mimosas and, and Bloody Marys for brunch. Now, before this happened, what was the time that you were required? It was When could you start selling alcohol? 11 o'clock. 
So this allows you to bump it down an hour. Correct. Yes. And that hour is is that enough, or do you need? Some? Yeah, that's all we need. And that's thank you. And when you first brought this, and the reason I'm saying is, is this really is a policy change if this was to pass today, and that the understanding is that. Normally, this was allowed in hotels and things like that, but there has. Oh been no, I think and we've had some restaurants. Yeah, but it's right. fairly it's a fairly recent development I, that we've been doing. Because I think we we've typically not let anybody serve alcohol, but we're ten. Before ten, correct. We're oh. ten. But it has been something that because I, I know that I've run into it, and and I'm for this, but I want people to understand it on Sundays. That sorry. some people have been some restaurants, and I know one in particular at Ward's Corner has said that they were not going to, because they figured that they would automatically be stopped from doing it and uh, I had encouraged them to apply they did not John did and and it something that would go through so I think that there is some idea in the community that you cannot get through with this if you have a restaurant and you're not in some hotel downtown and oh. it does go through and that's why I wanted at least the citizens to understand that it is something that will go through okay thanks John All right then. you can have mimosas at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. right Okay. Sometimes we start early. <laughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protoziru? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6? An ordinance granting a special exception to Salt Saltiuk LLC authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment known as Stonehouse Lounge on property located at 3300 North Military Highway Suite 3320. Planning Commission recommends approval by 7 0 vote. Oh. Dispense with the Mr. Charter. Mr. Stanley's here to answer questions if there are any. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, R7, an ordinance to amend and reordain Section 2 18 of the Code of the City of Norfolk, Virginia, 1979 so as to establish a procedure for continuing a meeting of the city council that may be postponed or canceled due to hazardous weather or other conditions. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protoziru? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. An ordinance permitting Town Bank Ghent Branch to encroach into Collie Avenue and Westover Avenue with an exposed aggregate sidewalk with modified concrete banding landscaping and planters at 1006 Collie Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I have to abstain. I'm a member of the Town Bank Board of Directors. R9, an ordinance permitting Kelly Jones to encroach into Pelham Avenue right-of-way at 7437 Delman Avenue with a living shoreline erosion protection system as approved by the Norfolk Wetlands Board. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10. An ordinance permitting Hampton Roads Transportation, Inc. to encroach into the right-of-way of Chesapeake Boulevard with a pole and a footer. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R11. An ordinance to amend and reordain Article 4 of Chapter 16 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add one new section numbered 16-100 to provide the treasurer the authority to accept credit cards for payment of taxes and to authorize the treasurer to add a fee to such payments in order to recover fees charged by the credit card companies. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Is the treasurer here? Uh, um, that, um... I told him that his uh, presence would not be necessary. He would have been here if I hadn't told him not to come. So that would be um, my judgment telling him. Well, perhaps in the future we should have him here on questions like this. Um, this is allowed by state code. It is a yes. change. So, uh, But it would be nice to have the treasurer here. I know that he works very hard, but we need to have him here at times. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Our 12th? An ordinance accepting $115,816 from the Virginia Pre-Hospital Information Bridge Special Initiative Grant Program of the Virginia Department of Health Office of Emergency Medical Services for the purchase of mobile computers for the Department of Fire Rescue and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the $115,816 in grant funds for the purchase of the mobile computers. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Mr. Uh, Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? 
Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13. An ordinance accepting a 2013 State Homeland Security Program grant award of $28,470 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management for the Citizens Emergency Response Team and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds for the Citizens Emergency Response Team. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Dr. Woodley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. You have, you have an One additional item, Mr. President. Yes, sir. And it is a resolution uh, appointing members to the Architectural Review Board for certain terms. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. That concludes the formal uh, portion of tonight's agenda.